I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and Fintech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Ruben Yap, the project steward of Zcoin. Ruben, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. It's a pleasure to be on. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, likewise. If we could kick off the interview by understanding a little bit more about the problems that the Zcoin project is solving and how the privacy protocol actually works. Sure. So, I mean, we are privacy cryptocurrency and I would say most uh, cryptocurrencies now do not have any kind of uh, meaningful privacy. And the reason of that is because, you know, blockchain records everything permanently and publicly. That means every single transaction is, you know, there for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And we really think that's a real problem for many reasons. I mean, if you want to use business, uh, use it for business, you don't want your competitors to know, you know, uh, about, you know, who is your suppliers, how much you pay your staff. But even on a more like, fundamental, like human rights level, where you don't want like, you know, everyone surveilling how much you have as a well, financial privacy, right? When mm -hmm. I'm paying for a cup of coffee, he doesn't even need to know how much I have or, or where I got my money from. So the idea is that Zcoin is a privacy first digital currency and we enable untraceable transactions. We mm -hmm. really want to, we see as a check and balance between uh, the state and, and, and the government as well. And how we achieve this is using uh, certain types of zero knowledge proof technology that allow people to destroy their coins mm -hmm. and to redeem them for brand new ones with no previous transaction interest like brand new coins. And um, that's the way we kind of, uh, we, we achieve privacy on our platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really interesting. And it's funny because a lot of people that aren't really involved with cryptocurrency yet think that it's super anonymous and that it can't be traced. But the fact is that, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum can pretty easily be traced using chain analysis. So I'd like to dive in a little bit deeper with Zcoin and Bitcoin and Ethereum, which most people are familiar with. Are there sure. similarities to Zcoin and, and Bitcoin? And also, does Zcoin have, or, or does Bitcoin and Ethereum have any of the privacy features at all that, that Zcoin does have? Um, I think it's, first of all, I mean, Zcoin is based off a of Bitcoin base. So mm -hmm. we share uh, many of the like key infrastructure, like, mm -hmm you know, the note code and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but what's, but if you're saying that, can they actually implement Zcoin privacy? I think this is one of the things that is going to be very hard for them to do. It's probably impossible for Bitcoin to do just because they're so conservative, right? Mm -hmm. And once you start uh, introducing like more advanced forms of cryptography, uh, it's going to be quite divisive. Uh, because if you want to implement a privacy protocol, it's not just at uh, is it's not just an implementation. It actually needs a hard fork because you you need to support special type of transactions. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethereum, uh, I mean, they have had they don't have it in the base layer, but you can kind of do it in certain types of smart contracts. But similarly, they aren't using our technology. They they are generally using stuff like zk snarks. Mm -hmm. which uh, which have for some drawbacks as well. So I would say that none of them have uh, the kind of privacy that we have. Mm -hmm. And right now, the privacy solutions that uh, Bitcoin are having are something called CoinJoin, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a bunch of people coming together and agreeing to mix their funds together, which actually mm -hmm. has been shown not to be very effective uh, if you really want high levels of privacy. So... Uh, no, I would say none of them can match what we have at this mm -hmm. point in time. Yeah. That's that's good to know. And with Zcoin, in terms of the ease of use, you know, between Bitcoin having a Bitcoin wallet and being able to send uh, Bitcoin easily to another person's Bitcoin wallet on their phones, uh, is it just as easy to do the same with Zcoin? Sure. I mean, yes, I think it's exactly the same process, it's, you know, sending, receiving. Uh, with our current protocol, you you kind of need to burn the coins first if you want anonymous mm -hmm. transactions, but you can always do that in um, 
in advance. And uh, one of our upcoming releases uh, is with Edge Mobile Wallet, and that actually burns all your coins, so that when any time you need to send an anonymous transaction, um, it's all ready for them to use. So I would say no, no particular real differences in in usability there. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I've heard, you know, outsiders sort of backlash against privacy coins because they could be used for nefarious purposes or for bad reasons. But Zcoin claims that, you know, there's potential to be used for bad, but there's also a lot of potential to be used for good. You know, can you talk about, you know, why the positives outweigh any potential negatives of using this kind of technology? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, privacy and, and encryption in general has always, you know, sometimes uh, people paint it as a as a something negative, right? And I guess the, the most common argument is, is that I have nothing to hide. Why why should I be afraid? You know, mm -hmm. don't I trust the government? Well, first of all, that's a big question mark. Um, but the other thing is that you know who said that it was uh, Gobbles, who was uh, <laughs> one of the the head of the Nazi propaganda. <laughs> so the idea is that, you know, first of all, privacy is, is a human right, right? I would say it's a fundamental human right. And it, I, I feel that we should be, we should have ability to control what we, we wish to reveal to the world. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look even at those people who use privacy coins or those that use a uh, coin join or also of coin mixing services, the vast majority of them are for legitimate transactions. I mean, it's shown mm -hmm. in a uh, blockchain analysis companies, they're saying very, very few like painted funds, hacked funds, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are actually using uh, this type of systems. We should go to show that most people just want privacy, you know, it's mm -hmm. not not about like hiding illegal activity and if, even if you want to go down that path um you can do money laundering and all this sort of thing using existing fiat methods very easily as well like you know i would say 70 percent of money laundering from developing nations are done using trade-based money laundering which is pretty simple to do so why mm -hmm. would you bother with something like cr cryptocurrency mm -hmm. so but more importantly i hope people realize that it's not about saying something to hide, right? But can you imagine like a company or a government or authority or even just a, a nefarious, uh, like very well-equipped uh, third party being able to say, oh, look, you know, Ruben, you have a thousand Bitcoin. I know I'm going to point a gun to your head. Mm -hmm. I think that's a real problem, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think we should be giving out data willy-nilly. And similarly, you're not going to give your bank statements to everybody. Mm -hmm. And because of the public nature of blockchain, which is not just to someone, you know, it's to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, we yeah. really need tools like this to protect. And I guess the last point I would like to make is that if you do believe in the, the actual original like precepts of uh, of cryptocurrency, which is to be uncensorable, right? And above mm -hmm. any sort of power. You can't be uncensorable if you don't have privacy because, mm -hmm. you know, basically, I know it is, I can point the gun to your head. Mm -hmm. I do think that you, to be uncontrollable, to be uncensorable, privacy is a necessary element. And I think we should really move away from talking about whether it's hide from, from illicit activity because... Yeah. Honestly, the, the, the data shows that it's not really the case. Yeah. 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 And part of maintaining your privacy is using this technology that's integrated into Zcoin called zero knowledge proofs. Now, a lot of people have mm -hmm. heard this word, but may not understand exactly how does it work in maintaining the privacy, but being able to make a transaction. Sure. Um, well, actually, zero knowledge proofs is just a type of like mathematical proof. And the basic idea of zero knowledge proof is to prove so that you've done something without giving any other data beyond the fact that that, that thing is true. So, for example, in, in Zcoin, the fact that you burn coins and redeem them for brand new ones, you have to prove to the network that you burn coins 
but without showing the exact coin that you burn because if you're showing that oh when i'm redeeming i'm going to redeem this exact one that i burnt mm -hmm. then there's no privacy there so the the beauty of this particular zero knowledge proof is to prove that yes i'm one of these people who burnt um and and the basic idea of zero knowledge proof is to prove something without giving any other additional data the user doesn't actually have to do anything on the text that happens all in the back end yeah. but um and I, I also would like to clarify that you know zero knowledge proof is not just one thing there are many mm -hmm. types of zero knowledge proof mm -hmm. and in particular the proofs that we use is actually something called one out of many proofs mm -hmm. uh, the most other popular one that is in use today is something called zk snaps which is used uh in zcash mm -hmm. so uh, Please don't get confused. Uh, there are many ways to, to, to use zero knowledge proofs and many types of zero knowledge proofs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And I guess part of the next step for mainstream adoption or one of the major steps is having the scalability of the network, being able to do thousands or tens of thousands of transactions at the same time mm -hmm. so that many people around the world can transact. And this has been a major problem with Bitcoin and Ethereum having low transaction volume uh, you know, scalability, limiting their growth. Can you talk about, have you overcome the scaling, uh, you know, problems within those blockchains? And are you able to bring this to a level that would be possible to have mainstream adoption? Sure. Um, I mean, first of all, we are based off a of Bitcoin core. So, you know, any problems that Bitcoin faces, we do face as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do, I mean, this, I guess, is a bit of a controversial view. Um, even at, in its current state, right? Um, you know, Bitcoin's scalability is kind of artificially limited with the one one megabyte block size, right? It's like you have a fixed bus, and obviously the transactions only can fit in that. And obviously, the easy way to do that is to, to increase the blockchain size or, or arrange them more efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, Zcoin even currently can do like you know four times the transaction volume of bitcoin we can easily bring out the eight times ten times or so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now this is not to say that this is uh, sufficient for like world scale use and of course you know things other stuff like lightning and we also have other stuff like you know uh, pot potential use cases like avalanche and all this type of technologies that would uh, you know, allow greater scalability. But really right now, the problem of privacy is today, uh, like we have that problem now. Honestly, the scalability mm -hmm. issue is something that, you know, maybe we're five or 10 years out mm -hmm. and we have to really focus on, 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 on the problems that we have today and we are the experts in privacy. So we decided to focus there. Uh, but yeah, but another cool thing is that our privacy uh, transactions uh, we do have optimizations uh, whereby instead of verifying every single transaction, we can batch them together so that we only need to do part of the work and and then the rest is like really, really quick. So we do have stuff and definitely scalability is a concern for us. Yeah. But, you know, right now we feel that privacy is a bigger issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, and you're right, you don't need it overnight because there is sort of a gradual increase in adoption and it doesn't always happen overnight. But one of the things when you continue to scale, do you see a trade-off between you know, increasing scalability, but also maintaining a level of, of decentralization and also making sure that the privacy functions work with the scalability as well? Is there like a three-way trade-off there? Yeah, like what do you call it, the trilemma or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, generally privacy technologies do come at the cost, right? Because uh, the transactions that you verify are much more complex because you have to verify the zero knowledge proof. So there's uh, additional lag for the computers to to do. So it does affect it a bit, but uh, I mean, at current scales or even at four times the current scales, that's not going to be an, an issue. Uh, in sense of decentralization, I think that's a really good point because obviously there are many, many projects that say that, oh, we have like, you know, how many thousand TPS and stuff like that. And um, then you realize that it's how they're achieving it is only having a couple of nodes validate. So that's like a real centralization. If I'm only going to choose five nodes to, to validate everything, obviously it's going to be faster than why do you need the blockchain, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, stuff like Avalanche, uh, you know, although it's not been deployed in the wild yet, uh, 
I do think those actually scale even as you add more nodes, even as you add more transactions. So those are really, really interesting protocols. I mean, Avalanche isn't the only one, but I do think that's really good. Um, I would say that there is definitely um, progress in that area. So I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that this is something that is going to be solved within the next couple of years. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And if there are viewers that are looking to follow along with the updates for Zcoin or start getting involved in the community, what's the best way for them to reach out and learn more? Sure. Uh, our website is at zcoin.io uh, with all the community links. Um, I think I'll guess our most active community channel is at Zcoin Project on Telegram. Mm -hmm. And that's bridged to everything else like a Discord and and our RRC, our matrix server. So uh, we're also pretty active on Twitter with Zcoin official. So yeah, those are the best places. Great. Well, I will leave those links in the description box for the viewers. Thank you so much for the time, Ruben. That's all the time that we have for the interview. But all the best with Zcoin moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Thanks so much, Ashton.